Okay. Good morning, everybody. And I've just started the recording, so we're all ready to go. Thank you, everyone, for joining today. Uh, Aaron, Dave, Kieran, Thomas, welcome, each one of you. Thank you for joining. I'm sure the others will get into the class soon. Let's just uh, pray together and we'll get started. Right. So, Thomas, would you be able to just pray with us as a class and we'll start? Okay, Pastor. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day, Lord. We praise you. You are so good in our life. Father, as we meet in a digital through Father teaches, let me learn from your word, O Lord. Help us to understand your word. Let the spirit of wisdom be rest upon us, Father. We thank you. We praise you for this time. We love you, Daddy. Help us to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Welcome, everyone. And uh, thank you for being on the call. We um, started yesterday um, talking about the personal uh, life of uh, the church planter or, you know, somebody who's going to start a ministry in an urban center. You know, we want to deal with in this section on how do we get ready practically if you're going to plant a church or pioneer a work uh, in an urban center. And so yesterday we talked about indicators of grace. I'll just uh, quickly um, share and review what we spoke about. Let me make sure somebody was just coming in while I moved, make sure they got into the class. Okay. All right. So here's the... All right, so, you know, uh, we, we started talking about this on how do we recognize whether God has called you to pioneer, to start something. Uh, we, we said yesterday that, you know, God needs both kinds of people. You know, we there, there are some who are called to serve as part of something that, is already there, maybe an existing church or ministry. And then God has called people to pioneer, to start something. How do we recognize some of that? And so we went through this list here on the uh, pointers or indicators that uh, we just call it indicators of grace. That means that, that God has given you the grace to be a pioneer. So uh, we talked about the pioneering spirit. We talked about the ability to work independently, uh, the ability to build bridges, um, the ability to be a visionary, uh, your prior experience in doing church plants or pioneering new works. Uh, that is very useful. Uh, we talked about uh, stirring in your heart to respond to a certain need or a certain situation or even serve uh, a certain community, a certain people in society to address their need that can grip your heart. Uh, number seven, you could have a clear, confirmed word of direction from God. And, um, you know, uh, the last, last point was about uh, something that just happens in your life. That, you know, I, I just use the word accidental in quotes. It, we know it's not accidental because it's been orchestrated by God, but uh, we're just saying that you know, just you, you didn't expect it, but it just comes your way. God set it up for you, and He surprises you with it, and you find yourself doing something where you're starting a work or you're pioneering a work, and uh, uh, and you know it may not have been something that you necessarily foresaw or planned ahead of time but God orchestrates that for you, okay? So we went through these eight things. Uh, does anybody have any questions on what we talked about yesterday before we uh, move forward? Anyone has any questions? Any thoughts that you were thinking about after the class that you wanted to ask about, discuss? Okay, 
Everyone seems to be fine. All right, let's go. So we're going to move forward from there today uh, and talk about, you know, just some wrong reasons. Uh, yeah, avoid these wrong reasons um, to engage in a church plant. That is some, just put on a few points here. Uh, don't be motivated by strife or competition, you know, uh, to go and start a church. Oh, you know, so maybe some 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 person started a church and uh, and uh, then you want to prove something to them, and so you also go and start a church, and then that's not the right reason. There are right motivation for us to start a church or a Christian ministry. Uh, don't do this uh, just because other options in ministry didn't work out. You know, okay, you tried this, you tried that, it didn't work. Okay, let me go plant a church. Let me go start a ministry somewhere. You know, so um, you, know, you wait for God's definite leading. And like you see, look for the pointers, the indicators. Um, don't do this as a job. You know, oh yeah, I, I just have nothing else to do. Um, maybe some organization wants somebody to go and start a work and uh, yeah, nothing else to do. You couldn't find a job. Okay, let me do this as a job. But um, that may not be the right motive. Uh, it may not be the one uh, a motivation that can sustain you uh, because uh, doing a church plant or starting a Christian ministry uh, is, is going to take a lot. It, it requires a lot. So um, we should just it should it, be, it should it should come from within you some as from your heart your heart must be in it right and uh, and don't do this for personal reasons uh, like to go to a new country or a sit you know <clears throat> for money or for comfort or status sometimes uh, and I've noticed this you know people come they say okay you know uh, I'll be a missionary to some nice place. Uh, uh, in order to go and start a church there. Well, if, if God has called you to go and do something, okay, that's fine. Uh, if God has really directed you to do something like that, to go to a certain city or a certain country and do it, okay, nobody's going to question that. But, uh, you, you know, don't do it just for the sake of wanting to move to that city or that country or for the sake of money or comfort or status, right? Do it because there's a call. Do it because God wants you to do it uh, and don't be motivated by other reasons because those things will fizzle out, you know, that the, 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 the excitement of those things will fizzle out and then, you know, you, uh, you may not be able to continue uh, engaging in a church plant or in that Christian ministry. So avoid these wrong reasons when you're engaging in a church plant. Another important question that many people ask is uh, when we talk about doing a church plant, urban church plant, or uh, starting a Christian ministry, uh, a question that comes up is, should I pioneer, or should I work with an existing Christian ministry to start the church or what I plan to do, or should I do this independently, do it on my own? And again, here, just as we spoke about earlier, there is no, you know, uh, right and wrong answer. That you know, uh, basically, you have to see what God wants you to do uh, and pursue that. But I just want to share some thoughts, some things that you can think about. Right. So, there definitely are the benefits of working with an existing Christian ministry whether it's a local church or denomination or parachurch or a missions agency, um, they definitely have, especially if it is a well-established church or a ministry, uh, uh, they will definitely, they, they'll definitely provide a lot of advantages, right? They will be able to maybe uh, provide you with a lot of guidance, uh, provide you with a lot of resources, uh, pay you you know, a salary or something that supports you financially, uh, uh, provide you with maybe existing infrastructure. So there are definitely a lot of benefits 
that come if you were to work with an existing Christian church or ministry to pioneer a work. And, and those are good things. They're not bad things. Uh, it's good that uh, they can guide you. They can give you training and show you how to do things. And you can definitely benefit uh, from that. Uh, but then, on the other hand, there are also situations where uh, you may have to completely go on your own. That means just go and start on your own independently, right? And uh, and if you're going to do that, uh, one of the things we suggest is to make sure you have uh, good relationships with uh, people who can care, encourage, and support you spiritually, right? So if you're working with a local church, an existing ministry, then that ministry is there to support you, encourage you, give you guidance, etc. But in some situations, you may have to venture out on your own independently. So there is no organization around you. You are starting something completely on your own. And um, if that's how you're going to do it, then uh, make sure you have some people around you or people that you can relate to who will care and encourage and support you spiritually, that you can talk to, get help, get input. And people have the time to do that, and, uh, who, who can be with you on this journey. Because it's a tough journey. It's not easy. And um, you, 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 know, you do definitely do need the help and encouragement of people uh, as you make this journey. Right? So let's just think through on this. Um, what would be the advantages of uh, working with an existing Christian ministry if you want to go and pioneer a church or, or a pioneer a Christian ministry in a city? Oh, you know, some of the things that you can take, benef take advantage of or benef benefit from is uh, they may already have well established proven strategies and methods. Yeah, so they can tell you, look, here are some things to keep in mind. Uh, this is how you go about it. And uh, they may have uh, done similar work in other cities, so they can share that learning. Uh, they can share strategies, uh, which is very, very useful. Right? When you go out to a new city, if you can benefit from the work of other people, if you can learn from what they've done in other places, other cities, similar to the city that you're going to, uh, it's a it's a big blessing, big advantage. Another advantage would be that uh, they may have a good support system to help you get started. You know, so they may be able to uh, they may have people on the ground in that city, or they may have a network of people, others who are there who may be able to help you. Uh, uh, they may be able to even provide, uh, let's say, a remote kind of uh, mentoring, communication support. So working with an existing church or a ministry uh, immediately you know, makes the support system available to you. So you can always you know, talk to them, consult with them, get inputs, get guidance, uh, which is something we all need if, when we're going to be doing something new we can benefit from, definitely. So that's an advantage. Uh, they may be able to, and I'm not saying this will happen all the time, but uh, they may be able to connect you with like-minded people uh, to form the core team, right? So if you say, example, I'm going to go to a certain city and start a church, they may say, hey, we know about three other people who want to go to that same city and who are, um, uh, who have the same thing in the heart, who start a church there, and then you, they connect you together, and then you find that, you know, you know it, it, uh, there is a uh, there is like-mindedness that, yeah, we can all work together, and so you immediately are able to form a core team and go and start a church in that city or start a ministry. So again, that's another advantage of uh, working with an existing local church or Christian ministry. And uh, they will be able to provide ongoing resources 
uh, spiritual oversight and support. So that's another advantage, right? They may be able to take care of uh, some, or if not all, of the expenses, and because there is a and there's an organization, a body of people behind it, uh, this is an ongoing thing. They'll be there to provide oversight and support. Um, another useful thing would be that they may have a name that is recognized and respected. So if you go to a certain city and you tell them, look, I'm you know, from this church or from this ministry, uh, they may immediately recognize that and uh, they may be people there on the ground may respect that. And so they welcome you, say thank you. Now, of course, if, if, it's a, if they don't like the organization, it could work negatively. But I'm just assuming that, you know, the organization has a good name. Um, that helps. Uh, there'll be people who will be willing to uh, assist you simply because you are coming from a, a certain organization to do a certain work. They recognize it and they respect it and they will be able to help you. And uh, for the long term, uh, working with a church uh, organization, they can help with transition uh, and continuity. Uh, so if you need to, so you've started a work in a city, you've spent several years there, and you feel that you want to move on to do something else, uh, because you're already part of a church, you know, um, you can work with them, you know, perhaps over the course of a year and plan the transition so that the work will continue even though you are moving on because they will send people in to take over the work and continue the work. So that way what you start will not stop when you leave, the work can continue. That's one way uh, of uh, ensuring continuity and transitioning. So these are just, you know, some of the benefits, the advantages of working with the Christian ministry or an existing church when you go out to um, start a work, right? So we definitely would see this as a good option. Perhaps in some cases, it may be the best option to work. But prime, very important, very important is that there should be theological alignment and agreement, right? So for example, uh, and I will, I think we will talk about it a little later. Uh, if there is a mismatch theologically, uh, it could rise to give rise to problems, right? Uh, let's say, you know, you're a spiritual believer and you believe in the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit and so on. And you go join an organization, a Christian organization that doesn't believe in that. Now, we are both believers, and that's wonderful. But if you go start a church, and in the church you're encouraging the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit and so on, but the organization that is sending you does not you know, really believe in that, then there's going to be a clash. Uh, but then you have to honor them because you know, they are the ones who are sending you. They are the ones who are you know, maybe paying for... Uh, a lot of the expenses. So it's going to be a very difficult situation. So uh, the best thing to do is to, you know, work with an organization where there is theological alignment. I'm not saying, you know, um, uh, this position of that position is more important. Whether you spiritually, you need to be able to flow spiritually with the organization as well. Okay. So, there definitely are a lot of advantages in uh, working with an existing Christian church or ministry when you're going to go and pioneer or when you're going to go and start a work in a city. And thank God these days, there are lots of uh, you know churches and ministries uh, that uh, have this aspect of sending people out to start new work. And uh, you can work with them, pioneer with them. But here are some things uh, uh, that I just bring out as a word of caution uh, some of the things you know that you need to think about as well. Uh, don't join a church or a ministry to do a church plant or start a ministry just because an opportunity exists. Now I remember, again, I'm going back in time to a 
the early days when um, uh, after we moved to Bangalore, uh, there were at least two occasions when this happened. Uh, one was in the very early days, there was uh, somebody had gone overseas. They visited a big church in the United States and they came back and they said, you know, uh, this church, so they happened to mention about all people's church. We, and at that, that time we were in the early days, so we were still very small and yeah, not, you know, uh, but they shared with them. And then, uh, so that church in the U.S. was a very big church, big ministry, was very interested in doing something in Bangalore. And uh, so they were willing to, you know, they said, look, this is what we want and we're willing to work with you. Uh, with us, ABC here, to do some work here in Bangalore. But I was very concerned because, you know, obviously they are a very big church and we are just starting out in the ministry doing work here. Uh, but I was, you know, we have a vision, a direction that we want to go. And uh, would there be alignment in vision? And I don't want, I didn't want this engagement, this ministry relationship to become a hindrance to the vision from us proceeding with the vision. So I sent them an email. I, you know, I uh, thanked them for the opportunity or their interest. But I had to state very clearly that as a church, this is our vision. This is where we want to go. And we want to have the freedom to move with our vision. That was very important to me. Right. Uh, otherwise, we will not be willing to take up this engagement. And so when I stated that, it just, you know, everything just dropped. Uh, so that didn't work. Uh, another time, I this was another big church again from the, from the United States. Uh, a team came. Somebody came. It's actually a network, um, Christian church, church planting network. Uh, came out of a church, but it was a church planning network. And so they came and they, again, they were exploring whether, you know, we would be able to connect with them and help plant a church or, or, or start a ministry and all. And for them, money is not a problem. They have the resources. But again, in that discussion, that conversation for me, it was, it was like, you know, hey, there's a vision that, that we have as APC. Uh, we want the freedom to pursue that vision here in Bangalore. Uh, while they may have a vision to do do something in Bangalore, uh, it may not be that we can connect, you know. So, but I have been those multiple uh, situations where different organizations, churches have come in Bangalore, and they contacted us to see if you know we could do this work and. Uh, uh, none of that materialized simply because, uh, and I think one important thing was vision. What we are called to do, what they want to achieve, there was a mismatch. I'm not not saying you know they are bad people or anything. That's not like that. This is not a mismatch. There's not a fit. There's not a match uh, in the vision in what needs to be done. And I didn't want to give up on our, the freedom for us to pursue what God's called us to do. So the point I want to get across is don't jump into an opportunity that, that's before you. Uh, just because it came up, you need to think about other things. You need to think about uh, some uh, some of these things that just put down here. Uh, you think about it. You know, uh, one of course, like we just mentioned, is is there spiritual alignment? You know. Uh, like we mentioned, so if you, you you are from a charismatic Pentecostal persuasion and there's a church planning opportunity from a purely evangelical ministry that does not believe in the charismatic expressions, uh, if you don't discuss this openly and uh, how, you know, they don't give you 100% freedom to do what you want to do, it could become a, a, a point of contention uh, and sometimes even division later on. Right. Sooner or later, these theological differences will come up and uh, it could disrupt the work. 
So just because there's an opportunity, don't jump into it. Think about these things when, when you want to work with a church or work with an organization to start a work. Second thing to think about is the cultural fit, right? Is there a um, cultural alignment uh, in, in, what, in the way they are doing things, the way you want to do it? And maybe the way you want to do it is very sensitive to um, a certain group, a certain uh, target group that you are reaching, whereas the culture and alignment that they are, they bring, may be suited for another group, a different cult cultural group. And so to take that culture and push it here will not work. You know, it won't work. So you've got to understand culture, church culture, the culture of doing ministry, uh, and uh, un, uh, you know, work with that. Let me just give an example. For instance, uh, and I'm just you know using this as an example. I'm not trying to say one is bad or one is uh, versus the other. That's not the point. So uh, a Pentecostal type of church has its own culture. For uh, you know, example on the pulpit, the congre you know, the congregation would expect the preacher to shout, you know, hallelujah, a lot of many times, and you know, a, you know, preach a certain way, and they expect the worship worship that takes place to have a certain kind of expression, and they expect certain kind of things to happen during the service. That's in, in a Pentecostal type, so that's a certain church culture. Now, ABC, for instance, does ABC believe in the Pentecostal experience? Of course, we, we believe in praying in tongues, the gifts of the spirit, uh, the prophetic, the charismatic, all of that. But the way we do it is very different from a typical Pentecostal type church. The culture is very different. Although we, the beliefs are very similar, and we believe in the manifestations, the gifts of the spirit and so on, the way it is expressed in a service setting is very different. So I've had people, there have been people who came to APC and they couldn't stay in this church. They couldn't be a part of the church because simply because they were expecting a Pentecostal type of church culture. So now, you know, for instance, I don't go up on the pulpit while I'm preaching, shout hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't do that. I just speak. Uh, I don't shout in tongues from the pulpit. But they want that. They expect that. You know, I'm, there may be times I pray in tongues from the pulpit or from the stage, main stage, but I don't do it the way it's, you know, the typical Pentecostal type culture happens. I'm not saying that's wrong. I'm just saying there's a difference. So there have been people who've come, attended the service, and they say, you know, uh, sometimes I, 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 this has actually happened. You know, some people, one person came up and said, uh, are you a spirit-filled church? <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, I, and I felt like laughing because I, you know, uh, because their expectation of a spirit-filled church was certain things like, you know, you, the pastor has to pray in tongues on the, in the microphone uh, for you know, so many minutes, there has to be the shouts of hallelujahs. And, and I said, of course, I spend hours praying in tongues and we do all these things. But uh, they couldn't accept that uh, this service was like, you know, it wasn't the way they expected it. So I'm just giving a simple example where uh, when it comes to the expression of the church service itself, if the culture is different, uh, and uh, you know, example, you you want to join, you you want to work with a certain organization that has its culture, uh, but you are trying to reach a certain people who who may be comfortable in a different type of church culture or ministry culture, then that's going to actually be an hindrance to what you're trying to do. Okay, uh, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, it's not that one is better than the other. It's just that different cultures minister to different kinds of people. 
and uh, different kinds of people feel comfortable in different church cultures or church expressions and so on. And so we need all of them, just that you need to clear, be clear on whom you're going to minister, how you, you know, who are the people you're reaching out, what kind of a culture would they fit into, et cetera, right? That you need to keep in mind. Uh, just a few more points and then we will pause for any questions. Uh, another important thing uh, uh, that you have need to keep in mind when you're thinking about working with an organization, a question you need to ask is, uh, would they give you freedom for God's grace and gifts to be released through you? You, know, you don't want to be in a place where you're, where you're stifled. You don't have the liberty to release what God wants through you. And this is kind of connected to what I just said earlier when there were different, you know, I'm, organizations or churches from from the U.S. who had, who had con contacted us in our early days, uh, you know, wanting to see if we could work together. And this was, you know, look, uh, I, I really want the freedom to do what God wants us to do without being held back by some sort of a, uh, a relationship with a, a church or a ministry somewhere else uh, who want to execute something here in the city. So uh, you need to ask yourself this question. You know, will you have the freedom? Because otherwise, if you join a church or a ministry that stifles you, you're going to feel very frustrated. And you're going to feel very suffocated. That, that there are things that are in you that need to be released, but you don't have the freedom to release them, to express them. Then... Uh, you know, at some point you're going to want to get out of that kind of a situation. So it's not going to work for too long. Even though in the, in the, in the initially you may try to make adjustments and all that, it, it's not good. It's not a healthy uh, situation to be in. So think about that. Another thing to think about is, does the ministry that you're planning to join are they committed to that city and region for a long term? Or are they going to do it just for two years and leave? Because if you are going to go there, it's very likely you're going to invest the rest of your life or a, the better part of your life towards that church plant or that ministry that you're seeking to establish because it, it definitely will take time. And, you know, and whereas if they are just there for, okay, let's just do something for a short term. They're not, they don't have a long-term commitment. Then you're going to be left abandoned at some point when they pull out. So you need to have that conversation saying, are you willing to you know, work there for the long term? Because I am committed for a long term. Now, unless both of you, both of you are committed just for two years, three years, or five years, okay. If there's a match like that, fine. You're going to go for three years, okay. Do it for three years and leave. But if you really want to do a church plant, or if you want to establish pioneer ministry in the urban city, it's definitely going to take a lot of time, years. And uh, is there that kind of commitment? Otherwise, when you leave, uh, very often things may shut down. The, whatever you've invested time and effort into may just come to an abrupt halt. So you need to think about that, okay? And last point you also want to think about when you're planning to join a church or a ministry to do a church plant is do, do they have you know, uh, systems that they will, by which they can provide support and assistance to help you in this church planting. You know, that means, is, are they bringing value to you and going to help you uh, in this way, right? So then it makes sense, yeah. All the other things are falling in place and yes, they do uh, have useful you know, experience and systems and assistance that they can give to help plant the church or the ministry. So. What are we talking about? We are trying to answer this question here. Should you pioneer and work with an existing Christian ministry or should you do the church plant independently? Uh, what we are saying is there's definitely a lot of benefit of working with an existing Christian ministry, but 
uh, you know, uh, so we mentioned some of these advantages. But at the same time, uh, there are some check, you know, points of uh, caution, things that you need to check carefully uh, before you commit to working with a Christian ministry and so on to go to a church plant. So let me pause here and see if we can have some discussion, some questions uh, on, on this. Any thoughts here? Thomas, I see you mentioned a very important point. What was that? I, I, I didn't see while I was talking. Actually, I said, uh, don't uh, jump whenever the opportunity is available. And uh, what we discussed today, each and every point is uh, very, very important. And uh, <laughs> in when we are choosing to join a ministry, these all mm -hmm. things are very, very important. As you said, the freedom thing, uh, because I have experienced where I was in the ministry. I'm not blaming them, but their vision is different and what God called me is different. So when they want to be in their vision, uh, it's kind of a suffocate or stress and uh, we cannot flow as we want according to the God's will. So it, uh, we need a freedom when we join uh, an organization. At the same time, whatever the chance we get, the culture, what you told, uh, what we discussed today, uh, really I can recall it uh, as the journey for the last uh, few years in mm -hmm. other ministry and, and certain experiences. So that is why I said it's very important because whenever we get opportunity, okay, some something we can do, but uh, it's important to see that they give the freedom or the culture or, uh, or their vision is matched to what my vision is. It's it's have to think and pray and to take the decision when a person joined the organization. Mm. So it's it's very uh, takeable points today what you discussed, Pastor. Mm. Good, good. Thank you for sharing. Anyone else? Um, Dave, Kanan, any other thoughts from your observations, your experience? Dave, anything you want to say? Kanan? Okay, uh, fine. So I want you to just think about these things. So, you know, there are benefits. There are, and I don't want to leave the impression that there are no benefits. There are benefits when you work with a good organization that there's, where there's alignment, there's a match in spiritual things. Uh, and uh, if there are people who have done this, they can really be of a very, you know, uh, they can give you good input uh, and all of that. So uh, that's very helpful. But at the same time, uh, be careful not to get into a situation where, uh, you know, God has put something in your heart to either plant a church or start a ministry in the city. Uh, but uh, you don't have the freedom to pursue uh, what's what what's God has put in your heart, then it can be very difficult. You know, and uh, I have observed, I have observed very sadly, uh, even here in our own city in Bangalore, you know, uh, a lot of uh, pastors and churches uh, go through these struggles. When, uh, and, I, and, I, and I wish we could help them in some way, but uh, because you know you, you're an outsider, you can't uh, do much. Uh, but then you see them go through the problems, uh, and it's because uh, there is a like a you know a, a church church planting uh, network or a organization, and uh, the individual church or the pastor who wants to pioneer. Uh, is very passionate about what he's been called to do. But when there is this church planting network that comes in, uh, and when there is a mismatch, uh, it becomes very, very difficult. And sadly, 
uh, in the process, I've seen a lot of pastors get hurt. Uh, you know, some of the things, and I'm just saying this not because I'm blaming uh, church planting organizations, but I'm just saying some of the things that have happened, you know, when, when uh, 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 an organization, I mean, they're, they're doing very well. They're doing very well. But some of the things that have taken place is when, you know, they suddenly the organization will tell the pastor who's been pioneering, saying, okay, it's time for you to move and somebody else comes in. Uh, now, he has done a lot of the work. And if there is no real reason and... Uh, uh, he's moved out to become an evangelist and somebody else is appointed a pastor. It becomes very, you know, uh, now if he wasn't, wasn't doing a good job or wasn't taking things forward, that's a different matter. But when it just ha happens arbitrarily or people replace pastors around, uh, all those kinds of things have happened, uh, which can hurt a lot of, the pastors, the church planters, the ministers. So um, that's why uh, I just want to, you know, place this before you with a lot of caution. There are definitely wonderful benefits of working with an existing church or a ministry. If there's good alignment and good support and there are good relationships, it is wonderful. But if that is not there, uh, a lot of things could go wrong and uh, people could get hurt, uh, which, I, you know, I, I do not want wish that for anybody. So that's why, you know, I, I'm presenting these things uh, to think about, to be cautious about. As, um, you know, I many of you are young and you're going to, at some point, start a church, start a ministry or be involved, uh, it's good to keep these things in mind. Yeah, as you prepare for the future. Okay, so I'm going to pause here today. Um, let's see, next week, we're going to get to the next chapter, which is personal preparation, right? Uh, how can you prepare yourself? So in this chapter, we talked about, you know, how can you know that you are called to do a church plant? And uh, we answered the question whether you should work with an existing ministry or work independently. So we gave some guidelines on that. And the next question we want to talk about is how do I personally prepare for uh, pioneering a work, whether it's a church or a, a Christian ministry in the city? So we'll go through some uh, practical things on it. And then afterwards we talk about, uh, uh, you know, how do you make the journey? Some Again, some practical things to keep in mind as you make the journey, which will take years. You know, it's not going to happen within a few months. Uh, that church plant or starting a ministry usually, usually will take several years. And so uh, some guidance on making the journey. All right. So we'll pick that up next week. Uh, let's ramp up. Let's close in prayer uh, if there are no questions. Okay. Let's uh, pray, and then we can dismiss. Um, I forget who prayed yesterday. <laughs> who wants to pray? You can join and pray. Dave, would you like to pray? Sure, Pastor, no problem. Father, we thank you for this class, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you're learning so much about church planting, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father, that you have given us this uh, desire and this uh, willingness in our hearts so that we can follow your, follow the vision that you have given us, Lord Jesus, given each one of us, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for our pastor as he taught us from his experience and from from, from the word, uh, from, from the lesson that Lord Jesus. We thank you that let this lesson be a role model for each one of us, Lord Jesus, so that we can come and look back at it, Lord Jesus, and we can learn again and again every time when we need it, Lord Jesus. And Lord, this word be a guideline for us, Lord Jesus, so that you can show us the path and the way how we should work and how we should live 
as we are ministering you, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you uh, for our class once again. And as we depart, Lord Jesus, I pray that your blessing to be upon each one of us, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, everyone. I'll uh, see you all tomorrow. God bless. Have a good afternoon. Uh, bye now. See you tomorrow.